you're human, I'm human, you're black, I'm black, we're Africans, then at least just give me the information for free. Get a tag left, right and center, you're persecuted left, right and center, why are you charging? Well, but we did go through a lot and we had to defend our turf. For whoever wants to, to walk this path, they would have to be very patient. Louis and Chichi are well known in Zimbabwe amongst both small and large business owners who buy and import products from China. They are business partners who met via social media in a group where they were being taught how to shop and ship from China online. They then launched their own business in 2019 and started teaching thousands of people online on the right way to source products from China. They already have a strong online community of more than 10,000 people from different parts of the world who have benefited immensely from their services. Their small business is growing fast and they've already launched LC Shipping, which is a logistics company in Zimbabwe that provides shipping services directly from their warehouse in China. Their online tutoring services are available to everyone and they also do their best to connect you with the right shopper or shipper if you are in different countries such as Canada, Ireland, South Africa, Zambia, the US, the UK and many more. The current pandemic has forced people to think outside the box and look for ways to make money online. Louis and Chi Chi found their niche which was people who wanted to learn how to source products from China using 1688, Alibaba, AliExpress, Tmall and many other online marketplaces. I've personally seen this online tutoring business grow into something that I believe is going to amaze you if you keep checking on them. I really, really, really enjoy talking to these two ladies. They seem to have a powerful friendship and a healthy business relationship, which is something that is important in a partnership. If you want to go into a business partnership, it's best to do it with someone who shares the same values that you do. And this is what these ladies have done. This is Smart Hustles, a series where we go deep into the stories behind some of the most inspiring startups and side hustles helping thousands of people to succeed in business. I hope that this series will help you to better understand what it's really like to start and run a business so that you too can take your business journey to the next level. Thank you, Louis and Chi Chi, for coming here and sharing your stories. So for the benefits of people that don't know you, Louis and Chi Chi, how did you guys meet? How did this all begin? We met in a group that also did stuff to do with China. And then we were just fortunate enough to be in the same group and partner together to do the things that we were doing in that group. And so we just clicked and then certain things, like everything else comes to an end, certain things were happening. And then we just thought, you know what, why not? I mean, the original so why don't we continue with our business that's how we met so at what point did you say okay let's start a business <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, like she said, it was an era where things were actually happening about buying from China and shipping as well. And it ended during the, the time of that uh, era. We were chatting. We were more like, I think we were the closest in, in the same group. After everything ended, we just thought, you know what, why don't we just continue doing this? Because we were actually good at what we were doing at that time. So how did you raise funding for your business? The business stuff to do with online lessons don't necessarily need funding it's all about your skills and your knowledge and your intelligence and then you just start it's something that you can't exactly say i need to have a capital to start abcd is we just needed to be present to have commitment to have time to have internet to just be available and then we just use the resources that we had so chichi what yeah. sort of marketing strategies would you say work the best for your business i'd say we when we started we actually just knew what we wanted but we didn't have a strategy really the strategies came as we went along that's when we realized that like maybe this would work for our model and also we were working with the, the reaction of the clients if you do this and the, and the clients don't react then you probably try something else so as we went along we we're just trying until we finally settled for what we thought was best for our clientele. So Louis, at what point did you guys realize that, okay, this is working, I think we're succeeding. I don't think we are there yet to that point where we can say we've said this is working, but our, when you start getting recognized, when you start seeing yourself, uh, having people coming and saying, thank you so much for helping me and the testimonials, start getting, you know, start off with one and then you've got 10 and you've got 15, start realizing that every time China is mentioned, 
there's always a Louis or a Chi Chi, then you see, oh, I think this is working. So I think, I don't think we actually recognized that it, it was working. It just fell into place. And we just thought, oh, okay, we're not yet broke. <laughs> we're not yet, you know, we don't have like a day where we say we don't have anyone to teach China. It's working. <laughs> okay, I completely get that. How has the pandemic affected your business? It was more say for people that are struggling because of COVID. But for us, I'd, lo- I'd love to believe that we were in the right place at the right time because this is when we find borders are closed. I wouldn't say we really had uh, issues with COVID. Though, of course, I also want to believe now that maybe after two years of having COVID, if um, the lockdowns and whatnot would be lifted, it would make uh, um, our business grow bigger and better faster. But I think COVID was actually a blessing in disguise because it made people look for alternatives than just being cross borders, which at the end of the day was us and we were in the right place at the right time. So what are some of the challenges that you guys had to overcome? When you teach something like China, it's not everybody who believes that certain things should be monetized. We are in an era where some people just think because you have a certain knowledge and you're talking about it as lessons being taught online, then you're human, I'm human, you're black, I'm black, we're Africans, then at least just give me the information for free. So we've had, that was like one of our biggest challenges because every time where sometimes we'd get like our names mentioned or someone sees our advert, it always came with that whole, why are you paying for information you can get for free online? So I think that was like the biggest challenge I've ever had where you get a tag left, right and center, you're persecuted left, right and center. Why are you charging when you can give us for free? Then they start talking other nationalities. That's why Zimbabweans never go far because we always want to be, you know. Yes, we have, we have dealt with that. And sometimes you get mentioned, someone comes and says, no, I, I can do this for you for free. No, why don't you use YouTube? Why don't you use Google? Why don't you do? It's like people don't actually value someone's time, someone's knowledge and expertise. Like you have to say, no, Rufaro, you're doing a, you've got a YouTube channel. I want to be part of it. And you just say, no, because I've got an audience. I want you to pay for it. So like, but why am I doing it? <laughs> yeah, so those are the type, those are the biggest challenge we've had actually. Where why are you charging? Why must we pay you? To, that's your mad. Ah, no, we actually, we actually went through a lot actually. <laughs> okay, so there's also but an issue of, so there's an issue of people not valuing time and also not putting value on the knowledge because I think what people. Yes. I think what people then also mistake is the fact that, yes, you may get information online on YouTube, but it doesn't be yes. getting it from someone who's actually done it or is currently doing it. So yes. the same way you but buy a textbook, yeah, the same way you buy a textbook to learn it, it should be the same way you put value on someone's knowledge, not just time, but also the knowledge and the expertise that they have to share. Exactly. You're not going to just get into a class and say, because you're already a teacher, so teach me. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to pay for that teacher to teach you, right? But for when it comes to teaching online from China, people like, I don't know, we went through a lot. <laughs> we can't even get into the details. But what we did go through a lot and we had to defend our turf. Because if we hadn't done that, I don't think we, we would have been here where we are right now. And sitting with you, where you really see us as, a, as people of value that you can actually say, let me interview. I'm still a bit, is this me? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Chi-Chi, what are some of the business goals that you have achieved together that you are really most proud of? When we started, I, I personally also didn't even believe that today would be sitting here and we'll be having these kind of discussions whereby we're actually recognized. And I want to believe that everything that we did, everything that we started off as the plan is actually panned out. So, of course, some of, of the things have been a little bit slower coming forth. And uh, one of the goals is um, we've managed to grow our audience and as we are speaking right now on on facebook our facebook group has almost 10,500 people in the group and the facebook page is also coming along well and we have six support groups on whatsapp that's about 1,500 people plus that we have managed to teach in just two years and uh, the shipping business side we're not yet that big but we are coming along and i would love to believe that we're also a force to reckon with because wherever china is mentioned we're also mentioned so the goal was just to continue with this china journey and make a difference and be a different supplier or service provider compared to other service providers and i I believe we've managed to do that so far what sort of personal sacrifices do you think you've had to make to make this business other than sleep of course um 
I'm going to speak for Louis on this one because I'm actually also grateful that she managed to do that. She held the fort for about a year. I was doing something else that I was taking my time, but I also feel like she understood that whatever I was doing also was contributing to my finances. So she was doing the most for almost about a year. Then it's only about around mid last year that I was like fully into this. So personally, I believe on Louisa's side, family time was robbed because she was holding the fort and also she was doing what I was supposed to have been doing also. Then uh, personally as Chichi, I think uh, I would say finances and also family time because now that I'm I'm doing this almost full time, it also means I have to wake those 14, 15 hours a day and some weekends when uh, I'm supposed to be resting, I'm actually going through inquiries and responding to them as professional as I can be and trying to be as fast as I can so that I can go back to the family. So yeah, financially and family time. I would think those two. Okay. Like the, so there's no social life whatsoever. No social life. <laughs> I kid you not. The first when I'm seeing people on Facebook and they're like, at these places, and I'm like, my husband, which place is that? Then he looks at me and he's like, you've never heard of it. And I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so looking at what you guys have done so far and what have you enjoyed the most about running your own business, this is going to go for the both of you because I'm sure they... Uh, I want to start. When, when you run your own business, you're your own boss and you do things your way. Nobody tells you nothing. Well, except for Chieta, But nobody tells you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of being my own boss. At least you get to, I get to follow my own dreams and experiment with my company. We experiment with our own ideas. Like, whereas where you, if you're working for somebody and you suggest something and then someone quickly shuts you down because they think that their way of doing things is the each way. So because we now are own bosses, we get to experiment a lot with a lot of things and nobody can tell us it's not doable. Even Chichi can say, oh, it's worth a try. If we fail, we fail. If we win, we win. So we're not really like going in that whole thing of saying, ah, ah, we try everything and anything. We are everywhere. You want, we, we want you to sleep with me, sleep China. We want you to know Louis and Chichi. That point. <laughs> All right. So Chichi, how do you guys handle disagreements? Let's say, for example, for the difference of opinion, <laughs> which regards how things are supposed to happen. Will they be pulling of weaves, throwing of shoes? How do you guys handle the tantrum? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, let me take this one. Uh, the thing is, we do fight. And uh, the one thing that I've, I've found between the two of us, which is very rare, considering that before we even uh, like met online, we were not even close, like we were not even in the same circles, like social circles. But right now, we respect respect each other so much, just that even if we have disagreements, no matter how much we disagree, in the two, almost three years we have known each other, we have never like had a serious fight that someone else has to come and chip in and try to make us reconcile or see things the same way. Whatever Louis wants to say, I uh, I sit down and listen. I may not agree with it at that time, but we also give each other time to actually think things through before we come and respond. So I respect her, she respects me. And because of that, whatever issues we have, in as much as we don't agree, at the end of the day, we sit down and actually like look things factually. Like, look, Louis, this is what's happening. And factually this and this and this and this. And then whatever it is that's going to make our business go further is what we end up going with. So I think it's just mutual respect between two people who met when they were actually ready to tackle entrepreneurship. I actually like the last statement that you said, when they were ready to tackle entrepreneurship. Amen. That's a very powerful <laughs> thing. But, and someone who's in business will understand this. They don't even need anyone to explain what that means. <laughs> All right. So, Louis, knowing what you know now, what do you think you guys would do differently with regards to starting your business? Um, Knowing what we know now, um, okay. When we started this, it was me and Chichi. And at times we so overwhelmed that we thought maybe we needed to add in more individuals to our business. Knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't have made certain choices that I made. Some choices I made them against Chichi's um advice. I'm one of those people who just 
see is good in everybody and i was like oh no i think you know and and we've been beaten a lot of times actually in our business if this had been two three years ago there are certain partnerships certain relationships we wouldn't even have bothered ourselves with we wouldn't even have a certain tell would have cut loose right there and then we've been backstabbed we've been beaten we've been battered we've been a lot of things and i, I was always the one who was like oh no let's do this and you know and she would be like, no, Louis, business, I don't do that. I'm like, but you know, and I wouldn't have, I would have actually just worn a face of a shark and just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but then it happens. We need to learn those lessons sometimes when you're running something and then you know the do's and the don'ts of running a business. But I would have avoided certain relationships and certain partnerships yes okay so chi chi you've worked with louis for quite some time now so i'm sure you know her best qualities when it comes to business can you just give me two of the best qualities that you think this is what makes louis a boss and then louis i'll ask you the same of chi chi so, <laughs> so you better start thinking okay i'd actually go like with uh, maybe persistence and trust like louis trust so much that like sometimes i'm like really my guy do you have to do this but i'll say <laughs> yeah trust and persistence those two okay and louis for you um chi chi has this thing that you know how sometimes our business gets frustrating sometimes and the times when i'll be so frustrated and chi chi just comes and then she just calm. like i don't even know how she does it but she'll come and calm the situation down and i'm like <laughs> You even hear what you're saying. I even believe in everything that you're saying. I think that's one of her best qualities because sometimes you don't need somebody who's got hay fever running around and just acting crazy. You need someone who just takes a little stick and just turns a little bit and just says, no, hold up, stop. We don't operate like that. That's one of her biggest qualities where she calms this, the situation down. And then the other thing I love about Chieta is her honesty. It's rare to be in business with somebody who's not honest. Who's honest, rather, let me put it like that. And she, she is so honest. You know, like, I think she runs almost three quarters of our accounts, but we've never had like any penny or anything missing or anything of that sort. Even if I forget, sometimes she'll remind me, no, look, there's this payment, there's this one. There's... I think it's very rare in business to find a partner who you can say is honest enough to actually tell you what is going on or what you would have missed. And those are the, those are the two qualities that I love about Chichi. She's calm and she's honest. Okay. So Chichi, what advice would you give aspiring entrepreneurs for saying, okay, I, I want to do this whatever business that they have, but maybe they just need a match. I follow Strive Masiwa, by the way, a lot. And a lot of Jack Ma as well. From, from what I've gathered from those guys and what I'm also applying in my own entrepreneurial journey, I would say... Um, for whoever wants to, to walk this path, they would have to be very patient, like literally patient. There is a time when you're running a business and it's not about money. It's just about, it's just about giving good service. And sometimes it may take long. It may take years before you even finally make any profit out of the business. But so long you're patient and so long you know what you want to offer, you're not going to let go and you're not, you're not going to be uh you're not going to feel like you're being used when no money is coming through the coffers so I, i'd say patience and i'll also say another thing that we actually do together with louis is we save if you want to do something like it could be two three months where we are saying whatever we are making from this cannot be touched until we have this amount of money that also means at the time that we are saving whatever survival we're going to be doing has to be from our pockets or from elsewhere so you're gonna to have to be patient and you also have to save and um the saving part i would also encourage them to read um, the richest men in babylon that's where i get that from it's not easy to save but then i've read that book and i've been leaving that book and to be honest this past two to three years have taught me that if i am consistent in being patient and save it saving our funds at the same time offering the service eventually it will pay off and people like Faro will start uh realizing <laughs> that there are people like us out there. knocking on your door to say can you come on my show i want to interview you <laughs> no i like that all right no so we've come to the end of the interview guys so guys thank you so much that's okay thank you Faro. All right. So Thank you, Rafaro. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye ladies. Bye. 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 Thank you.